Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we're discussing which Jews cursed the Kennedys. <laughs> what? Really? Really? Uh, Oh, is that not so? That's, 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 that's but before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. We are drinking racism. <laughs> <laughs> we are drinking tangerine quad. Well, oh, that was terrible. From the Avery Brewing Company in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, so that's not what you're covering today. No, no, we're not, we're not talking about Jews at all in this. Really? Because really. when I was researching, the majority of the uh, theories I found involved Jews. I think you're looking at the wrong side. Yeah, you're on. The, you don't need to be on that website. It's probably from there, that other episode were, that we did, and now there, my search is all fucked up. Were there people with with you know white hoods on that were never talking about this? No. Okay, I was just just checking. Uh, Those people don't like blacks. They or, don't like or, Jews either. Or, they don't like Jews or either. Jews or homosexuals. Oh, they just or don't like anybody. Anybody that's not a wasp, a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Yeah, yeah. You Think know of I like spent Hitler? years not knowing what that meant. All right, so uh, uh, John, a we are drinking a, a quad here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what a quad is? Yeah, so, and, and I was I was talking about this a little bit before. I'm pretty sure, oh, by the way, this is an 11.2% ABV. We usually mention that. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm pretty sure it was a Dutch system that was started. Yeah, I think so. Um and they used to rate the flavorfulness of the beer uh, with, you know, single, double, triple, quad. I guess you could probably go higher, but I haven't seen it, you know, a, a yeah. centuple or something like that. Um, but so a quad is the most flavorful uh, style of beer that you can get in that system, you know. Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. Uh, it might be good. 11.2, huh? Yes. That's, that's going to be interesting. We'll see how this pairs with the coffee. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about the Kennedy curse. Uh, before I get into it, uh, w- w- what do we know about the Kennedy curse? Just, just uh, that they We're are, doing a show about it. <laughs> <laughs> that the American Kennedys, uh, known for their political endeavors, have suffered a dick load of tragedy. A dick load of tragedy. I love your metric units that you use here. You know, you get dick load, I'm, ass ass load. I'm really trying to get this to take off. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of metric units, I we're gonna have a fun fact moment here. Oh, fun! I learned. Fact. I learned something interesting. Did you know that? How um, fun are your facts? <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty fun. Uh, did you know that a moment is an actual medieval unit? Really? It's ninety seconds. A moment is ninety seconds. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's interesting. So. So the Kennedy curse. Now you know. Wait, the more you know. <laughs> the Kennedy curse is. If you didn't um, get that, if they were just listening. Sorry, I know we, we've interrupted you twice. If you didn't get that, you're too young for this show. <clears throat> wow, or too old. The uh, the Kennedy curse is something I have literally heard about my entire life. Uh, the the fact that this family has had had so many tragedies and kind of give some background of it. If you don't don't know much about the Kennedys. That you know, along with the Bushes, I would say they're they're America's royal family. You know, they 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 have, they have been in power. And the Kardashian for, Wests. Uh, the Kennedys and the Bushes. <laughs> would you add the Clintons the in there? Seriously, I don't. I don't think. So. I don't think so yet. I think. I think you could add. They're add, more like Maleficent. I think you could add the Clintons in if if the daughter's da- daughter ends up getting into politics or something. Fair but enough. it's really one generation with them. Right. What if that Hillary had gotten elected? Would that change anything? Well, I still think it's one generation. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you know, I don't... I don't uh, okay, I, I, fair I, enough. You know, you're looking at... The Kennedys came over from Ireland. Uh, Joseph Kennedy, the father, was the second generation to come here. And this is the family that ha- uh, that has... You know, he was an ambassador. Uh, his He had a, a, a son that was a president. He had two other sons that were senators. Uh, one, both of those guys ran for president. He had a, a, you know, he's got grandsons that are in the Senate. He's got, uh, they're just, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, uh, by the way, they're also very closely linked with the Bushes. If you, if you go back far enough, there's family relations there too. Um, shocker. But, uh, (laughs) the, the Kennedys, the Kennedys ended up coming to power because of the amount of wealth that Joseph Kennedy managed to, uh, uh, to acquire largely by, by being, Two by two things. One, he he did a lot of bootlegging during the uh, during prohibition, uh, and admittedly so. So did this, and and put a lot of wealth back. And second, he was one of the few people that saw the stock market crash coming, and he made a lot of money short selling off that. And when nobody else had any money to invest, he was able to buy a lot of a lot of stocks cheap and 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 put all this money. 
he immediately starts grooming uh, his his family as this, as you'll see the newly rich do a lot of times, where they start start trying to take on the heirs of 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 the old rich, mm-hmm. and his family needed to to become part of society. So he starts going through and 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 grooming his kids for politics immediately. Um, but the, the the curse is already starting to get there. He's very worried about about what his what his family's family's reputation is going to be like. And out of the kids he has, you know, we all know we all know John Kennedy, we all know Robert Kennedy, we all know Teddy Kennedy, the, 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 the three brothers. What we forget about sometimes is Rosemary Kennedy. Rosemary Kennedy was was the sister who suffered extremely bad bouts of uh, of depression. Uh, and according to Kennedy biographers, uh, he was he was very embarrassed by this. He was very embarrassed that she showed weakness. And at the age of 23 years old, Joseph Kennedy had his own daughter lobotomized. Mm-hmm. Wow. He, he lobotomized her, uh, and and the surgery went 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 terribly bad. Um, Do those surgeries ever go well? Well, but you all have to. This is 19, there's a different kind of bad. This yeah. is 1941, and in 1941, lobotomy was a legitimate surgical process. Uh, it was, it was a thought, considered legitimate. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it, it was believed that 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 by by severing the uh, whatever that is prefrontal, up there, prefrontal, prefrontal cortex. lobe cortex. Yeah, by by severing that spot, you would separate somebody from their emotions. Uh, in her case, because that sounds like a great idea. Well, if, if again, if you're suffering from extreme depression, almost suicidal depression, I can see where when you don't know today mm-hmm. what we know today, I can see where they that they would think it's something that that makes sense. Yeah. A little bit of a rabbit hole, but do you think that we have a surgery now that is like our lobotomy? Like, they're going to look back later and say, what the fuck were they thinking? Yes, plastic surgery. You think um, that's... I was also I thinking of, like, the uh, the su- stomach shrinking, like, yeah, the, you know... The, the bands and all? Yeah, I, I don't know. All I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. List. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's got to be something. As we learn yeah. more, you know, we, we, we change this stuff. But Did you know that the vast majority of lobotomies were performed on women? Well, the vast majority of depression uh, that, that, that is identified as with women still today. So yeah. it would kind of make sense. Yeah. And as I said, identified. I think men have it as much, but we are we are more hesitant to admit it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, but Rosemary Kennedy's lobotomy goes terribly, terribly wrong, and she ends up institutionalized for the rest of her life. Um, that's kind of the beginning of the of, of, of the idea of a Kennedy curse here, uh, yeah. and one and the, one they brought upon themselves. Yeah, one of the things that I found, like what they said went wrong with that lobotomy, was there's like a certain depth into the brain that they go, and apparently they went like an inch further than that and just fuck shit yeah. up. Now I, I gotta know, and, and maybe you guys don't know, is an inch further in that surgery just kind of like a small error, or is that like, damn, you fucked that up? You you know what I'm saying? Um, An inch seems like a lot for the size like a of a lot, brain. Yeah. You know what it, I'm saying? Yeah, it does. Um, but clearly, it's a large fuck up. It <clears> it <throat> seems like it would be very similar to you know, I don't know, doing some work on some veins in your neck and oops, cutting the carotid artery. Yeah, I, I guess what I'm asking, and y'all probably don't know, is that like a one in a thousand error? Or is that like every tenth yeah, one? Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. We don't I, do them enough anymore yeah, we don't to do know them, that. We don't yeah. theoretically don't do them at all anymore. Uh, yeah. uh, at least in this country. Uh, so Rosemary spends the rest of her life in this institution, and she is kind of kept out of the, the light intentionally. Uh, mm-hmm. Joseph Kennedy, uh, again, according to his biographer, uh, uh, did not go see her. The, the mother continued to, but he, he wanted complete separation from that. It was very embarrassed by the fact that he had a, a, a daughter that was weak. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be, be something about the Kennedys you see over and over again is they're going to push this idea – that you've got to be strong through everything. And you've mm-hmm. got to put that image out of being the man's man. And even the women had to put this image out of being stronger than than, than mere mortals. Okay, yeah. uh, Here's a great irony that out of all of the, the brothers and sisters, Rosemary Kennedy was the first one to um, that, that, that didn't die a violent death. Uh, we'll, we'll see uh, now. T- Teddy's going to die later on, but it's it's kind of an interesting. Uh, and his wasn't violent; his was his was cancer. But she was the first. It's also interesting to see their impact on uh, popular culture, because that is very much a trope in Hollywood of wealthy, powerful families 
um, you know, and the the patriarch of that family um, requires that all of his kids be better than human. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, and you know, I would I would even argue. I think there's there's some debate to be had, but maybe not technically. But I think having your brain turned into soup is pretty much death. You, you know, I mean, yeah, you yeah. still walk around, yeah. but uh, yeah, but you know. If you if you saw her and and every now and then I can remember as a kid we we would we would catch pictures of her and she she actually seemed pretty happy but you know uh, <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't make it a good thing but right. but you know she's I she, she, she seemed to be happy. doing something. Um, what if the hedonists had ever found lobotomies? <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> anyway, so, go ahead. So uh, Joe Kennedy, the senior, is is out here grooming his children to to be heirs to the throne. Now this guy. If you don't know Joe Kennedy, he was one of the architects of appeasement with Hitler. He, he along with, with Neville Chamberlain, he was an American ambassador, and he was one of the ones that, that that's told Hitler, it's okay, you can keep the Sudetenland as long as you promise not to take anything else. Mm-hmm. He was an appeaser, okay? So he's got a kind, kind of that reputation as well. Uh, but he is, he is uh, grooming his oldest son, uh, Joe Kennedy Jr., Joseph P. Kennedy Jr., to, to be the heir to the throne. And Joseph was, was, was sent out there as, as the standard bearer. Um, and it looked like that there was actually plans for, for Joe Jr. to run for, uh, for, for Congress out of Massachusetts at the end of World War II. But in 1944, Joe Kennedy's Junior's plane mysteriously exploded over Suffolk, England, on a uh, on a what's only been called an intelligence mission over mm-hmm. Suffolk, England. We don't know what happened. We it, it doesn't look like it was struck by a by a uh, you know a, a, an enemy plane. Mm-hmm. It was over a, a friendly country. We don't know what happened, but his plane unexpectedly explodes, uh, killing Joe Kennedy Jr. Um, so we're this. If you're keeping count at home, is plane crash number one. Plane crash number one, Joe Kennedy Jr. And this is going to to uh, uh, raise to the forefront the second brother, okay? Uh, Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy was really never supposed to be the standard bearer. Mm-hmm. He was the playboy. He was the one that had had, had a good time. He, he chased women and did all this stuff. But <coughs> now he has to grow up and and kind of step into his, his brother's shoes. Um, Jack, kind of a king's speech kind of thing with different yeah, issues. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, sort of, sort of. Uh, or Henry VIII kind of thing you know. where his older brother died and he was forced to quit chasing women, well, at least publicly. <laughs> uh, so Jack Kennedy is forced to do this. And, and, and he had had his own, Jack Kennedy had had his own problems. Uh, you know, he was, uh, he, he had his his, uh, his PT boat shot down during World War II, mm-hmm. uh, killing some people. Kennedy was not one. Uh, Kennedy, in fact, comes back and writes a book about it called Profiles in Courage. Uh, where, where he talks about, about, about his experiences with that. So Jack Kennedy comes back. Uh, he's now being groomed. He, he marries into a, uh, a, a, a big uh, photography, a big journalism family, the, uh, Jacqueline Bouvier. He marries her and runs, gets that seat that his brother was going to win. Um, Kennedy ends up going on to the Senate, ends up becoming a... Uh, finally, the president of the United States. Um, everything looks like it's good, but now we have the instance, the problems we have with with the 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 royal fam- the Kennedy royal family. I'm using the word royal because it, right. it, it it's the closest thing we have to it. Um, they had had, uh, they did have two children. They had uh, Carolyn and and uh, and John John, uh, their John Kennedy Jr. But while Within the first year of, of being in the presidency, uh, or the first two years of being the, being the president of the United States, they end up losing a child to infant respiratory disease in August of 63. They have a stillborn child, and they have a miscarriage. So it's, 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 it's pretty rough, a pretty right. rough time. By the way, whenever, uh, whenever Patrick Bouvier Kennedy, the, the, the one that died of infant respiratory disease, dies in August of 1963... Jacqueline Kennedy is not able to attend her own son's funeral because she is in the hospital for the C-section. I mean, right. it, 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 it's, it, it's pretty terrible. That's got to be devastating. Uh, devastating. And think about it. August 1963, this, 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 this kid dies. November of 1963, dad dies. Right. 
it's got to be a tough time. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, that's, 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 that's the most important one. That's the one that we're, that we're all the most familiar with. Mm-hmm. In, uh, in November 22nd, 1963, the JFK assassination. Um, Dallas, Texas, Kennedy is, uh, his numbers are bad, really bad in the South. He's running for re-election, mm-hmm. uh, and he needs to... He needs to, to get his numbers up. It looks like Kennedy might lose Texas in, uh, in November 63. So he comes to Dallas, Texas, and against the advice of his, uh, of his Secret Service, he orders that, that, that the top be put, back, put down on the, on, on the convertible, and he go in an open carriage car. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kennedy is shot. Uh, Wasn't there a statement that you told us that somebody made to Kennedy like... Uh, isn't it clear that Dallas loves you or something yeah, like that? There, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was a statement that was made by the uh, the chairman of the uh, Dallas. I think it was Dallas County Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. Isn't it clear that, that that we love you in Dallas? Mm-hmm. And uh, then he was shot, yeah. uh, by presumably by Lee Harvey Oswald, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, you, we'll, we'll never know the details because two days later Lee Harvey Oswald is shot by Jack Ruby. Mm-hmm. He never gets to go to go to court. So now we have. The second brother dead, uh, the second assassination attempt. By the way, the Warren Commission did conclude that Oswald was a lone shooter. I don't want to get into a lot of Kennedy assassination right. stuff, but uh, I have been to the Daily Plaza to the sixth floor, mu- sixth floor museum where this happens. You can actually go to the window and see there's an X on the street. I'm telling you, the shot's doable. It's right. not something that, that, that would be difficult for even even Oswald Oswald was a marine he was a, he was a trained rifleman it, mm-hmm. it shouldn't have been a problem uh, why don't we stop and talk about the beer here and then move into the other brothers okay we want to do that sounds good who would like to start the discussion of the beer i'll do it okay um so we are drinking the tangerine quad by Avery Brewing Company can you pass that bottle back over producer i i, I want to see cuz i think this th- in this aged uh yes in, aged bourbon, in bourbon barrels barrel, yeah yes Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so when I got this, I I actually uh, grabbed a couple different beers at the time, and I already had a porter in my hand, and I was about to grab the coconut porter that Avery makes, and I realized I probably shouldn't have two of the same kind of beer at the same time. So I grabbed this one that was right next to it because I thought everybody on the show tends to like a quad. Um. But that tangerine's going to be weird, and I don't know how everybody's going to feel about it. Um, I feel like the tangerine flavor in this is very light, which I like. Um, you still get a little bit of the citrusy taste to it. You also get a lot of the the woody flavor from being aged in the bur- bourbon barrels. Um, but one of the things that I really found enjoyable about this was the smell. It smells very much like... Chex cereal, like not any of the funky flavors, but like original Chex flavor or Chex cereal. Um, and with that, it's got a very grainy taste to it. The mouthfeel is great. And I think this is a killer beer as we transition into fall. It's not super, super heavy. Um, the ABV is a little bit high for my taste. Um, I think that it could be brought down just a notch and and still be great um but all of that to say i'm gonna give this a 3.5 3.5 all right mike you or me go ahead all right so i i think this is a a fantastic beer you said that you thought the tangerine was light i don't get that i think the tangerine is prominent but smooth i think it blends in well that's probably a good way to explain yeah. It. it yeah it's not aggressive overt or overbearing yeah it's, it's not fighting with the rest of the flavors it's working with them it's it, it, it's synergistic in, in, mm. in the way that it, it it all flows together i like that you're right the woodiness is there and 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 again you know i don't know that you would necessarily think that woody flavor and that tangerine would go well together but it does um it's got an interesting alcohol profile so you can definitely tell, because honestly, I'd forgotten that you had mentioned this was, was bourbon barrel aged. Mm-hmm. And when I tasted I that, too. and I was like, there's, you know, it, and it made me think, I was like, wait, I think she mentioned this bourbon barrel aged. And that's why I asked to pass the bottle back. You can tell if you know what you're looking for. Absolutely. that This is a bourbon barrel aged drink, but it doesn't taste like there's some of these we've got. And you can, you feel like you're drinking flavored bourbon. 
This yeah. feels like a beer. Well, and it's it's not syrupy like some of the uh, some of the bourbon barrel it's not beers are. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's it, it's thin, but you'd expect some of this from alcohol to be thin. Um, I think it's I, I, I think it's an excellent beer. Um, I'm giving it a four three. Four I, three. Yeah, okay. I, I, I I really enjoy this. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm a fan of this as well. Uh, it, it is a little thinner than I would like my beer, uh, but again, that's 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 the alcohol content. Mm-hmm. But the flavor is wonderful. The, the tangerine to me is more of a tangerine peel than a tangerine. Yeah. And uh, I like that. I like that. I, I, it, it's there. It's 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 abrupt, but it's not in your face. If that mm-hmm. makes any sense at all. Um, the the bourbon in it, the bourbon barrel aging in it, is bringing out the sweetness of the bourbon, not the not the bitterness of it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important. So many bourbon barrel aged stuff, all you get is that bite and bitterness, and 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 you don't get that here. I'm going to give it. Uh, I'm going to go four two on it. I think okay. it's a it, it's a really good beer. I thought I was going to be the high one until you came back with four three. So, well, all um, right. that was a an outstanding beer. Uh, so four two, four three, and three three five. five. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. Don't that's I feel right. like the asshole? Do we anyway. want to see what beer advocate has to say? Well, well. Sure. Okay. We'll we'll see what we do. Well, let's play our game. So, uh, yes, this will 100 percent get you late. Um, it is unique. And so I think that that has an impressive quality to it. Um, I think that it has enough to talk about in there um, that if you are maybe struggling to if you are struggling to seal the deal, um, that this is going to really kind of up your fuckability level up your fuckability level so um, uh, on the fuckability scale you were getting higher yeah exactly yeah. and and um now it, it is like what 11 percent abv yeah 11.1 i think so it's kind of pushing up on a cosby beer so you know i would not ply them with this by any means because you could get into some risky territory but i do think that used responsibly this beer will get you laid if you would like to ply me with this it would be okay and you will get lucky <laughs> All right, so... I uh, can play you with a rolling rock and get lucky. That's true. That's true. It doesn't yeah. take much. We could give you a good lawnmower and... and good, I say getting my lawnmower is lucky. So. I, uh, yeah. That is true. <laughs> deal, deal. Um, but no, so real quick, I'm going to mention the uh, the beer advocate score. Um, actually, I think we're really close as a group, but none of us hit it. 3.95. Oh, huh? yeah. Okay. So, good. About our average. It makes me yeah. feel less bad. Yeah. So with that, uh, uh, date beer, I think this is the like... Uh, example the the standard to go for for the hail mary beer, the one where you're 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 taking a girl out on a first date that's out of your league and you are really trying to impress. Uh, I mean, it, it's there. So th- this is definitely a first date beer. It's a hail mary beer, but I think it's also versatile. I think you could pull this up at any point and it, you'd have a good time. But this is what you need to go for in that hail mary. Yeah, I, I, I think I would agree. This is not a lawnmower beer. This is the beer that you drink when you want to forget you were supposed to mow the lawn. Uh, so uh, not a lawnmower beer. Um, it's, it's, this is too good of a beer to be a mm-hmm. lawnmower beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of where we are. So, all right, let's get back to our discussion here. And I want to introduce the youngest brother here. Uh, and we'll, we'll go in and out of him. We're going to talk about Teddy Kennedy or Edward Kennedy. Uh, Ted Kennedy was, uh, uh, you know, he was, he was the third brother. Again, he's, he's down the line, but he's, he's going to make his way up into Congress and eventually Senate. Eventually, he's going to be, uh, when he dies, he's a member of the Senate and the longest serving senator in, in the Senate at the time. Uh, he acquired the nickname of the Lion of the Senate. He became a real power. Uh, he also ran for president in 1976 and 1980. Uh, both times losing the Democratic primary, mm-hmm. but he was a—he uh, has been a real force throughout history. But he wasn't Daddy always. Daddy would have been mad. Uh, yeah, yeah, he wasn't always. In the 1960s, he was kind of the jock, the the dumb jock brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, the it was Bobby Kennedy and John Kennedy that were known as the you know uh, John was the suave one and and Bobby was the smart one and then Teddy was the one that could carry a football. Right. You know and. Uh, you know what I love about this, and and we didn't really grow up with the Kennedys. What we know them from yeah. history, but we didn't grow up with them, is that it seems that they're talked about kind of the same way that the Beatles are talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know in a lot of ways. In yeah. a lot of ways, they were uh, they were our our version of that, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but couldn't sing as well. 
They could drink, though. Uh, at least Teddy could. Maybe if you drink as much as they did, they could sing as well. <laughs> so, first time we th- 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 that we see uh, the idea of this Kennedy curse hit Teddy Kennedy, and he's going to be hit several times. June of 1964, uh, Teddy Kennedy is in a plane crash. This is the, that's plane crash number that's two. Plane crash number two that we've seen. Uh, uh, one of his aides dies. The pilot dies. Kennedy is actually saved. He's, he is pulled out by uh, by Senator By, who, who was who was there with him, pulls him out of the out of the crash. Uh, but he's going to spend weeks of his uh, of, of recovery. He has a broken back, punctured lung, internal bleeding. So not unscathed. Not unscathed. It's it, it's 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 pretty bad. But he seems to be the one that's, you know, that, that sometimes they called him bulletproof uh, because it seems that over and over again Teddy Kennedy gets near death. Yeah. But it doesn't touch him if that makes any sense um so that that's teddy kennedy back there screwing things up with 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 the plane uh and there there was lots of rumors that there was alcohol involved with this uh that was never proven Mm -hmm. uh but there were there were rumors about it so the second brother robert kennedy uh bobby kennedy as they called him he uh again known as the smart one he was uh he was attorney general for his brother uh for when John Kennedy was president he was attorney general of the United States uh which which has led to a lot of of, of crazy conspiracy theories because one of the first things Bobby Kennedy does when he becomes president is he goes after organized crime Pre- uh, attorney, sorry, general. When he attorney general yeah. he goes after organized crime uh and we know that that organized crime uh through their union buddies, were, was at least part of the reason John F. Kennedy was able to win the presidency in the first place. Uh, they were able to get the vote out in West Virginia and push Kennedy over the top. So there's, there, there was some question about, did, you know, was, was, was some of this stuff payback for... What, were the they eliminating the competition? Yeah, yeah, what, what was going on? There's a great story about Jack Kennedy when he... Uh, Jack Kennedy was a classy guy. Mm-hmm. When he won his, his uh, presidency, he uh, uh, won the presidency, he, he had gone up there... And won, wait, wait, Jack, Jack Kennedy, John F. Kennedy. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, I'm, I'm flipping stories here. When John F. Kennedy okay. won the presidency, John F. Kennedy gave this quote. He said, uh, "I have a, a letter here from Daddy." He and he opened it up and he said, uh, "said Dear Jack, don't buy one more vote than you need to. I'll be damned if I'm paying for a landslide." <laughs> so he made jokes about this. Uh, and, and dear John, that was John. Jack Kennedy. Jack so Kennedy's what they call him. Them. Yeah, what? John F. I never Kennedy heard was Jack. About them calling him that. Yeah, that they called him Jack Kennedy. I did not know. That. Uh, okay. So Robert F. Kennedy is is, is now the, the the standard bearer. <laughs> He's been Attorney General. He is now a senator from New York State. He had uh-huh. moved to New York to run for an open Senate seat, like much like Hillary did. Right. Uh, and he is running for President of the United States in his own right. And he's kind of running, saying, "Let me complete the job." that my brother started. Mm-hmm. He's running on that Kennedy name, the Kennedy mystique. And in June 5th, 1968, Robert Kennedy wins the Democratic primary in the state of California, which almost assures that, that he's going to be the Democratic nominee for president of the United States. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen at this point. And he goes out and gives a speech about the passing of the torch from one generation to another and from one brother to another. And... Upon finishing the speech, he steps down from the podium, and he is assassinated by Sirhan Sirhan. He is shot dead. Sirhan Sirhan uh, it has, has never come out and said said exactly why why he did it. There's speculation that it was because of the support for Israel, mm-hmm. uh, and he was Palestinian. So, uh, but but we we don't know. He he's Robert Kennedy is now the second Kennedy to be brutally assassinated, and was on the cusp of being president of the United States when it, when it happens. Okay? Wow. So uh, we have two plane so wait, crashes, three dead babies, and two assassinations. Yes. So okay. I want to ask a question about this. You said he's on the cusp. Like, where was this in the whole cycle of things? Was he officially the nominee? Like, he was not the nominee, but the vote count was in such a way that by winning the California primary, it was almost impossible to lose the primary. So we're, we're at the place in the primaries where the candidates start dropping out and we kind yeah, of say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was pretty much assured. It would, it, somebody would have to have to make a sweep of everything from there, there on out. So let me ask you a question as, you know, kind of a, a, a government teacher. Yeah. You have a candidate who is either guaranteed to win or is, in this case, almost guaranteed to win. 
and they die before the actual nomination happens. Do they reallocate those votes? Do they rehold the primaries? Do they go the it, runner up? It depends on the states. Uh, that's a state by state choice. Okay. In most states, they uh, they hold those votes, and then at the convention, the, the they can they can cast them they're wherever uncommitted. they want to. Yeah. They become, yeah. Well, okay. they're 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 committed. But what happens in most states? You're still committed to that person on the first ballot, so that person would still get it. And the second ballot. Do they they're, they're free because to they're not they eligible, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of gotcha. kind of a weird weird situation. Interesting. Okay, I'm just, I was just curious. Yeah, that's yeah. Easy enough. Uh, it, it, it was it was a uh, somewhat strange. So Robert's dead. John's dead. That leaves one person to be the standard bearer here. The the grandkids are all too young. Right. The, the person that's left is 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 Teddy, and uh, again, sixty three, JFK dies. Sixty eight. Robert Kennedy dies, and they start talking about how in '72 Teddy's going to run. Mm-hmm. He's going to he's going to finally complete that mission, right? But in July of 1969, he is um, he is drinking at a at a party no. on, on Chappaquiddick Island. Um, and did he you l- just pour your beer in your coffee? No, I have two coffee cups. I poured my other coffee in my coffee. And he okay. leaves. Uh, he leaves the party. With his 28-year-old intern or secretary, depending on which book you read, right. uh, 28-year-old Mary Jo Kopechny, uh, on the way home, according to Kennedy, he took a wrong turn, and he ended up going down a, a, a dark road uh, in the middle of nowhere, and he ran off a uh, he, he ran off the bridge at Chappaquiddick Creek. Uh, Teddy Kennedy manages to, to escape. Mary Jo Kopechny is left trapped in the car, and and she drowns. She dies mm-hmm. dies there. Um, here's the here, here's here's the issue is that Kennedy goes back gets back to the Kennedy compound. Teddy Kennedy goes back to the family co- compound, uh, and it's not until the next morning that the police are notified, and the police are are, are notified that that there's been an accident. Uh, they they go there. They uh, they they pull the car out. They find Mary Jo Kopechny. Uh, uh, dead. Senator Kennedy is actually uh, charged with leaving the scene of the crime. He was uh, he was never charged with anything else. He pled guilty to leaving the scene of the crime, mm-hmm. which was a lesser of offense right. than, than manslaughter. manslaughter. Um, in a televised statement a week later, it's the first time we hear the term the Kennedy curse. Uh, uh, Senator Kennedy says uh, that he wondered whether some awful person did actually hang a curse over the Kennedys uh, in, a, in a televised statement. Um, Hold on. Who said that? Teddy Kennedy. Okay. In a statement about, about itself, he says, I wonder if, if some awful person did not hang a curse over the Kennedys. Mm-hmm. Um, which to me, you know, is, 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 you know, this is the second time Kennedy's escaped death. The yeah. plane, Teddy Kennedy, the plane's gone down. Now, mm-hmm. now the car's gone in. But this time, he fled the scene of the crime. Right. Uh, and and it, it's been alleged in several books that it was Joseph Kennedy. Uh, it was the dad that, that stopped him from, from making the phone call to, to report it mm-hmm. and said, no, we're going to wait till morning. And it was alleged it was because if we waited till morning, you'll pass a blood alcohol test. And yeah. You ah. wouldn't now. now, whether that's true or not, we don't know. Um, so another death. Uh, at the hand, if, you, if you're counting now, that's uh, that's just just for Teddy Kennedy. We have two aides. Uh, well, we have three deaths in, yeah. in two accidents now. A pilot and two aides. Um, so things are looking rough for this family. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we have Joseph P. Kennedy the uh, second. Joseph P. Kennedy the second was Robert Kennedy's son, uh, who was was okay. he was there. When his father was assassinated, he oh, okay. saw his father assass- assassinated. Um, and in 1963, he uh, he ends up cra- crashing his jeep and uh, and and leaving leaving his his passenger a lady named Pam Kelly paralyzed for life. Oh, damn. Pam Kelly was also his brother's girlfriend. Uh, so you, you you wonder about this. this he was stuff cruising that, around with his brother's he girlfriend. He was cruising late at night. around with his brother's girlfriend late at night. Uh, his brother brother David, who this is in 1973. Uh, his brother develops a terrible drug addiction after this, and David Kennedy, the, another one of Robert Kennedy's uh, kids, dies of a cocaine overdose in '84. Mm-hmm. So you're seeing 
all of this this starting to, to add up. Um, so we're now three generations deep, and we have people that are dying of of of, of strange things. So I was gonna yeah. I was gonna say you know I think it's it's a little disappointing because in in all of the the comic book literature that I'm familiar with. When you watch your dad get assassinated, you become a superhero. But apparently, you just cruise around with your brother's girlfriend. And become a drug which addict, which is which yeah. is less less impressive. Yeah. Yes. Um, Michael Lemoyne Kennedy, who is also a, a Robert Kennedy descendant, uh, he uh, he died in one of the strangest. I think this is the stupidest Kennedy death ever. Uh, mm-hmm. They played this game, and we used to we could see pictures of it back in the when, when JFK was president. There was there was video of it. The Kennedys would go go on skiing trips, and they played a game where they would play. They would throw the football back and forth while while skiing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Michael Lemoyne Kennedy died when he was playing this game and ran into a tree and died. He uh, he dies of a, a, a brain hemorrhage uh, from from running into a tree, playing football down the skis, down the ski slope. But again, it was him. He was trying that they were, they were filming this because they were trying to launch his political career and trying to make him look like the all American athlete right. that the Kennedys had demand that everybody be. Right. I have two questions about this. Yeah. One, did he catch the ball? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Two, did he spill his beer? I, Kennedys never spill their beer. They okay. don't drink beer. They drink scotch. Probably. Or moonshine. Do you spill his moonshine? They're, That's a better question. They're, they're Irish. They're Irish. It's yeah. got to be whiskey. Okay. It's got to be All whiskey. Right. Cool. All right. Um, now, the last one I'm going to talk about, and, and, and this is by no means the last of the Kennedys. You can get into cousins and all these. You, you've, yeah. got, you've got people that have that have. Well, have if you extend people. someone's family You've got far people that have, that have literally beaten people to death with baseball bats, but they are not. I'm trying to stick to Joseph Kennedy's direct project. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, we get JFK Jr. Now, do y'all remember JFK Jr.? No. Vaguely, actually. When I was a kid, John John was th- this. Uh, he was the uh, I, I don't, I don't, the example of what it meant to be an American. Mm-hmm. You saw him on TV. You've all seen the picture of him when he was a baby at the uh, in Dallas, at, or, or after Kennedy was assassinated. He's the little boy that's saluting his dad's coffin as it goes by. Oh, You've all seen that picture, I'm sure. That's John John. Uh, but JFK Jr. was raised in this family business Mm -hmm. of politics and remember his mother's family was journalists yeah so he did both um and he is ready to launch his career he's come he's he's 30 years old at this point i was about to ask that he's he's about 30 years old by this point uh and he's passed the bar finally He, he notoriously failed the bar like a dozen times but he's passed the bar he has uh uh be become a a a a real political voice. He's going on all the talk shows mm-hmm. and he launched a brand new magazine called George named it after George Washington. And George was supposed to be like a mix of GQ and politics. It was a, <laughs> it was a, it was a massively big magazine. It was, and it was breaking some big stories. It sounds um, like an interesting combination. It was, it was, it was politics for the 20 to 30 something, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, it was making politics cool, and he was somebody that was so cool all the time. Mm-hmm. Everybody liked John John, and uh, in July of 1999, uh, right after launching this George magazine and promising to put out a an expose that was going to shock the world, uh, his plane went down over the uh, over the ocean on the on the way to the Kennedy compound, and John John dies along with Three his along crashes. with his wife. So now we have three plane crashes. There's actually a fourth I didn't mention where one of the Kennedy sisters was in a plane crash. Mm-hmm. I didn't didn't get into that one. We don't talk about the Kennedy women. That's so, just, that's not the uh, John John was kind of the, the the end of this this era of of the, the you know the great Kennedys. Now that not, that having been said, there are still Kennedys in the House of Representatives from Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. But we're 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 cousins and we're we're, we're yeah. out there now. So we've seen all of these these accidents that have happened. And my question for you is. Is it a curse? Because I've heard about it my whole life. The definition of curse is an appeal to the supernatural power uh, uh, to come, or harm to come to a specific person, group, etc. Is this a, an example of a Kennedy curse, or is this an example of a lifestyle choice? I think it depends on the other stories. Because so the Jew thing that I mentioned at the beginning of the show. When you, when you, why do I feel like this ain't gonna be well? Shut up. Go ahead. 
when you brought this topic up, I thought you were like talking about the Kennedy curse conspiracy theories. I am. Um, and so that's what I started looking at. Well, talk to us about them. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, but anyway, so one of the ones that I found was that, um, <clears throat> they all go back to, uh, well, no, that's not true. One of them goes back to the first Kennedy, uh, Joseph. Yes. Joseph Kennedy's granddad. Yeah. And, um, it was, he had gone to a village in Ireland, I think it was, that had a bunch of Jews there, and he had found some stash of gold and stolen it from the village and brought it to America, and, like, that was where their wealth came from, but that the leaders of the community there got together and cast a curse. The, the Zionists. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. I didn't never hear that word well, from if we're, them. But. If we're talking about anti-Jewish conspiracy, I'm going to use the, the racist anti-Jewish statement of Zionists. Fine. Fine. Okay. Um, but, so said that the leaders of that community came together and uh, cast a curse on him and all of his descendants. I, I did see that. I did. I gave it so little credence that I just moved right past it because I really wanted to look at the history, historical side of it. But, but yeah, see, that's it, interesting to yeah. me, though. And then the other one was... Uh, it can be disproven so quickly that that's right. because that's not where the money came from at all. We know where the money came from. Right. Now, the other one was Joseph Kennedy um, was traveling on a ship back to America from Europe um, when he was doing his ambassador work. And there were a bunch of Jews on the ship who were trying to escape Hitler's wrath and whatnot. And that Joseph Kennedy made a bunch of complaints about them being loud and praying out where people could see them. And Joseph Kennedy was very, very racist, anti-Semitic. And so with that, like they had made some complaints and... And so a couple of the rabbis were like, fuck this dude, and put a curse on him and all of his progeny. You know what I think is interesting about the whole stealing Jewish gold story? It kind of seems like to me, because they admittedly made their money illegally, right? Yeah. yeah That's what they yeah. admit. It kind of seems to me that if they stole Jewish gold instead of like making their money illegally, that would be like you go to your church and you make a very large donation and your preacher asks you, where did you get all this money? And you run an online eBay store and you say, I shoot porn. Like, why would you <laughs> lie about the worst thing instead of just saying, yeah. like, I run an eBay store, right? Yeah. I found a pot of gold. What do you expect, you know? Yeah. Um, so. Interesting. interesting. You, know. I, you know, I understand where the idea of, of, of the Jewish side of it would come from. Because... I get it uh, for the Joseph Kennedy stuff. I, I don't get it for the granddad stuff no i don't i I, well yeah i think you're right but joseph kennedy you know he was he was he was one of the architects of appeasing hitler you know Mm -hmm. that that that, that says something he uh uh he also whenever john f kennedy uh, here's a side story when john f kennedy was running for for president frank sinatra was one of the big guys that that went out to raise money for him and of course frank sinatra brought his rat pack along with him dean martin sammy davis jr peter lawford and uh kennedy uh, Joseph Kennedy would not allow Sammy Davis Jr. to perform, not because he was black, that didn't bother him, but because he'd adopted the Jewish faith, he wouldn't allow him. Uh, so, wow. uh, you know, you got, you, you know, you start seeing there's a lot of anti Jewish Maybe stuff Sammy there. did it. It was Sammy all Sammy. cursed him. Oh it was God. all Sammy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's what it is—the Sammy Davis Jr. curse. Yeah, we've we, started we, a new yeah, one. Yeah, there you go. But so there were a couple of others. Jewish related theories that I found there. But what I found to be really interesting, and I guess kind of the side, a side topic here is that every time we look into conspiracy theories, there is always an anti-Jewish track. Yep. Like it does not matter what the topic of the conspiracy is there. And I don't know if it's that, people who hate Jews are more prone to conspiracy theories or, 
or, or what conspiracy theorists hate Jews or something. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know yeah, what the connection is, but there is always an anti-Jew yeah. version of every conspiracy theory. And you know, it blows my mind. While I was while I was reading all this, I. I, I I, you can't help when you read this and go, man, there's just so much here. Yeah. There's so much here. Something is happening. And then I, I went and watched something about it. And this guy said, you know, statistically, if you take this family and you realize how many kids they had, mm-hmm. it's not any more than other families have. Well, it and that's really what isn't. I was looking at. It's just that, 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 that they, you know, when you have 19 kids, this is what's going to mm-hmm. happen. And I got thinking about it. You know, and in my own family, I'm sitting here going, my family's nobody had a lot of kids. Mm-hmm. They were all one in two families. But... I've got an uncle that shot himself. His daughter was shot, and mm-hmm. then her husband shot himself. I'm going, and that's just two generations away from me. That's it. There's an Albert's family curse. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Uh, so I, I wonder. I don't think the Kennedy curse is real. Yeah. yeah. But I think that that enough bad things. I think their family has had a lot of bad luck. Well, and I think a had big, a lot of good luck too, though. Yeah, but I think a big part of that is that they are, because. When I was looking into it and I'm hearing all the stories of, well, this death happened and this death happened and yada, 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 um, they did have a number of birth problems, yeah. whether that was stillborn, dying shortly after yeah. birth. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can count those. That's just such a high number then anyway. Yeah, it, well, higher than it is today anyway. <coughs> yeah. But, yeah. But it did seem to be, be, be considerably higher for that yeah. family. Yeah. But again, you would expect that that in a fam- that that was something that would go through genetically, that exactly. you would have that, see that high in a family. Yeah, and, and so that was kind of my thought there was, I think you can discount those because I would be willing to bet if you looked at some of their genetics and... And obviously, we can't go back and look at that now, and that wasn't information that we had at the time. But I think you could probably go back and look at it and identify uh, some similarities well, they in, in what was happening there. Yeah, yeah, they weren't a healthy family. Um, and then they're living in the public eye, so they're traveling by plane a lot more, um, and and they're not traveling by the commercial plane one does kind of get me a little bit. Not that I believe in the supernatural. Yeah. Well, we got know, to with- three. Three. And really, and really four. I didn't talk about one of them. So, yeah. Fine. Yeah. Four. But they're not flying commercial airlines. Um, they're not even flying like private jets. They're flying like small. Hyper cubs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and and so I think I would be interested to know um, at around that time what the prevalence of cr- plane crashes of that type of plane were. Yeah. Um, kind of see how that compares well, I think it's a lifestyle thing I, yeah. and, and, and I think they were trying to put that image off of being risk takers and if you're a risk taker something's going to happen also that and then there's the, the drug addicts and the overdoses you're living in a high pressure high visibility family um, and with the that, availability of you can afford to have the drugs. It's yeah. not that you're that, that you're any worse than other families. Other yeah. people just can't afford to have as many drugs as you. Well, you can. they can't have. They can't afford all the drugs that you can afford, and you are being pressured to be way more everything. You're you're being pressured to be more athletic, more intelligent, here's the, more politically savvy, more socially adept here's than the thing everybody that I, else. That, 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 that always gets me is. We concentrate on the fact that the Kennedys were cursed because all these things happened. But we don't look at it and go, they had an ambassador. They had a president. They had three senators. They had three brothers that, that either were president or or were uh, uh, running running to be president. Yeah. Uh, you know, and is, there, is, is there a Kennedy blessing, too? Because yeah, they, they maintained a huge amount of wealth for several generations. Yeah, still do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, they they have had a lot of good a fortune. A lot of good fortune. Yeah. So we hear all the stats about how safe you are in a plane, and I just actually did some reading. Um, so I want to ask you, how many people do you think die a year in private planes? Ten. I don't have any 256. idea. 256. 500 yeah. people die a yeah. year in private planes. And they say that those stats for how safe they are is really because almost all the deaths per year from planes are accounted for in private planes, not commercial ones. Yeah. So that's, yeah. what, that's yeah. what that was yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 And so you have a family with a high concentration of people who fly private planes. And I think that's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, so not a curse. Not a curse. Not a curse. Don't believe in curses. 
So yeah, well, yeah. I mean, there's also that. Yeah. <laughs> like, but if we're yeah. gonna look at it, like, I try to be out objective. the fact yeah. that I don't believe in curses. I think we can discount I'm just saying, a I'm just lot saying of if, what's happened. If curses were real, there'd be a lot more people fucked because I have a list. Oh my god, I know. I would so learn how to do that. Oh my god, I know. Yeah. I might even become Jewish if that's what it took. And bless myself. I mean, fuck. Can but, you bless yourself? I think that's pushing. I, don't know. It. I think you're. Hey, I, hey, I'll bless you if you bless me. Works. All right. There you hey, go. John, we teamed up on something for once. We're, we're cursing your ass, though. <laughs> Live with him. Don't curse him. Insurance. Just, just, just take a big policy out. I could just. I don't have to curse him. I could just kill him. With that, I think the show is over <laughs> with. Uh, that was an interesting show. <laughs> hey, John, if somebody wanted to support our show, how could they go about doing that? If you want to support our show, as well as get uh, exclusive listener perks, you can go to patreon.com slash sixpackphilosophy. You can sign up on one of our patron levels, and we'll send you some goodies and give you access to uh, exclusive content and early releases. Yep. And yeah. Madam Mistress, if they wanted to sleep with a host, what could they do? Pay us five hundred dollars. There you go. All and right. you can fuck my, uh, you can fuck Mike or nap with me. There you go. There you go. I am a supreme snuggler. So just saying. But anyway. I'm an adequate sex. <laughs> so. Whatever's more worth it to you. Just <laughs> you saying. Uh, but anyway, we appreciate you listening to the show. You know what's gonna happen one day? I just gotta say. <laughs> One day somebody's going to take us up on that, and we're going to be in this whole dispute with Patreon <laughs> because we didn't have, we didn't deliver the goods, and we're going to have to explain to Patreon uh, why we're not having sex with people. I don't I don't, I don't know why you think I'm not going to deliver, but uh. I was going to say I will totally nap with you, motherfucker. <laughs> I will nap with your ass. I'm just saying you I'll say nap with your front too. You say you're you're going to deliver, and then Robert's going to come in and pay five hundred dollars <laughs> and say, "All right, Mike, come on." Saddle up, horsey. Oh, uh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> so anyway. Plan changed. Plan yeah. changed. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, hit us up on social social media by searching Six Pack Philosophy, or you can go to our website, uh, join our newsletter, do all those things. They're super fun. We enjoy them, and we hope you do too. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Somebody got to hand me a glass so I can do the sound effects. Oh. It's not the sound effects. Terrible sound effect. <laughs> That's why we have professionals. You don't oh. get paid for that. Fuck off. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 